So this is an Admiral dryer that I picked up off the curb a couple years back. Hooked up, ready to go. The problem is it's uh, blowing only cold air. This should be the, um, yeah, the heating element should be inside of here. So the air comes in, in here, um, goes into the machine through here, and the heating element is hooked up here and is all up inside of here. So we've got an open heating element, I'm pretty sure. We'll have to see about getting one, but uh, that may not be possible. I just don't know. Let's see what the model number on this is. This is a uh, AED 4675YQ1. So let's look for a heating element for this dryer. It's also got a little bit of rattle and have kind of a broken uh, lint catcher. I'll show you what the rattle sounds like. So working, but uh, definitely got some some noise issues i don't know if there's a um a bad bearing or if it needs greased or what i may uh may delve into this further okay so we've uh, gotten some parts in so this is our new heating element and it came in a kit uh, so it comes with some of the sensors and uh, uh thermal fuse and that kind of stuff so we're gonna install that um uh, probably last actually uh, because first I want to attack the uh, bearing issue so I have the bearings also uh, and this too came in a kit and this particular kit it came with a uh, it came with an idler pulley uh, also it comes with a couple of uh, bearings here and also a new belt if we see fit to put the new belt. I'll probably replace it just as a matter of course. So you have to take your lint screen out. You've got two screws right here. And a lot of these um, by Whirlpool, uh, Admiral is, is another brand. Also um, uh, Kenmore, I think, also you'll find uh, are similar to this in, in design. Okay, most people you, you'll see use a putty knife for this, but uh, I'm going to use some feeler gauges here. What I'm looking for is the clip. Looks like it's right there. So you press here and that should come up. And there should be another one here. Probably about equal distant from the edge. And then this one should come up. Yeah. If I can get it. There we go. Okay, and then this will tilt back. Underneath, in here, and also on here, there are some screws we have to take out. So that's one side, and then there's another one over here on this other side. Uh, and also this little Molex connector for the switch on the door has to come out. Let's see, it looked like it had a little clasp there. There we go. Now, uh, just kind of hold the tub up. And this front, there should be some clips on the bottom. There we go. Just gonna kind of lift that up off of there. Looks like we got some pennies. Now I'm seeing about four or five cents so far. So there's a belt that goes all the way around the tub and it comes to this tensioner right here. The tensioner uh, holds tension on the belt. You really ha you have to push the tensioner up and then slide the belt off of the motor right there. And then the belt comes off. As you can see, the tensioner just kind of falls loose at that point. Uh, and we'll just have to remember it goes in these these little slots down here. 
Got a lot of lint inside of this machine. Probably could get the vacuum after this. Okay, so now that the belt is loose on this tub, uh, the tub will just come up and off in here. And we can set it inside. And it looks to me like the belt's in pretty good shape. It doesn't look like I would necessarily have to change it if I did not want to, um, but I probably will go ahead and change it. But this thing definitely is gonna need a, a lot of vacuuming. Um, I would say, that this might have been a contributing factor to why it's uh, why it's in such bad shape. It's just got a lot of lint inside of it. See all the lint down in this. It's kind of covering the motor. It's covering that uh, bearing right there. It's covering this bearing right here. This one takes a lot of the weight. Uh, this one on this side, and it has a bracket holding it to the bottom there to prove it. That one has no bracket up there. Uh, but again, look at all of the dust and debris in this thing. We're gonna give this a good vacuum before we move along. Yeah, I have to admit I am somewhat disappointed. There aren't uh, any hundred dollar bills in here. That would be nice. We've got a quarter though, there's a quarter. I don't know what that is, a piece of something. Some kind of belt. There's another quarter. So we have 50 cents. There's 55 cents. We've got a long way to go to pay for the parts though. <laughs> Ooh, this one right here. That's the problem. This one's really seized. It's, it's full of uh, hair and it is having a hard time spinning. So, and like I said, this one takes the brunt of the force. This one, the, uh, oh, that's what that is. The rubber is gone off that bearing. That's why that one was so loud. So yeah, that makes a lot of sense. We're gonna vacuum the hell out of this. Okay, so that's much better, much, much cleaner. And now it's time to get after these pulleys. We're gonna tackle this one first. Like I said, we've got this bracket down here on the bottom of this pulley we need to remove. Uh, this should just kind of wiggle off of here. There's a, there's a little clip. There's a little clip. I think the new um, kit provides this little clip though. Oh yeah, man, this, this one is just full of hair and debris. It's no wonder there was a problem. There are a couple little uh, triangular clips uh, on each of these. There's one here and one on the other one as well. Got to remove those little triangular clips and I'm just going to do that with a little flathead screwdriver. I should be able to get under here and do, just pry it off of here. It's like rubber, kind of, like that. They provide new ones. But yeah, that is toast. Oh my god. Yeah, that's way beyond, way beyond its service date. There's one on the rear, too, one of those uh, clips, the second one. We are going to clean all this crap off of here you can see why it's seized clearly all the the hair and the gun look at all that that was in the bearing look at that wow it's sticky and all of this all of this has to come off of here. You know, I bet this thing stank too, like burning hair the longer it ran. 
All right, that was absolutely disgusting. I'm gonna get uh, something to wipe that down and probably grab some uh, lithium grease too to grease it up for the next one. I think this crap that's on here now is possibly old grease, but it's really, really sticky. It's 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 not a lubricant. Put it th put it that way. It's a uh, it's a glue now. Still more hair though, just keep pulling hair out. see it all look it's just it's like turning black where the hair was just burned pretty disgusting really pretty disgusting but that's all got to come out of there because if it doesn't it's just going to contribute to the problem happening again same problem yeah that's looking a lot better that's looking a lot better That's that's absolute world's better. Now this old clip still looks pretty good. I'll just use the old clip. Yeah, I don't see that going anywhere. Okay, so this old clip that holds the bracket on, uh, I can actually just tamp down on it a little bit. I'm just gonna tamp down on it. Just to flatten it somewhat. And it should it should still work too to hold this on here. That's on there. That's not going anywhere. Good deal. All right, now to the second one. Okay, same thing. We'll just prod the little clip off. This one could have probably stayed. Uh, it's, well, no, that's not true either because the, the rubber's gone completely off of it. So no, it had to go too. It's not it's not nearly as bad though as the other one was as far as the all the burned hair. It does have a lot of hair collected here though. Okay, this idler pulley uh, probably could stay the old one, but it's I'm gonna replace it just as a matter of course. I mean, I've got a new one anyway. I guess I'll have a spare part in the future. All right, like I said, the old belt is not it's not that bad, but I'm gonna replace it anyway. The felt side of the the tub goes toward the back. Of the machine, it looks like.
I think that's going to do much better. Put the top down. Okay. Now we'll turn our attention to the other part of the service, uh, the electronics. Okay, so we got to replace some sensors and we've got to replace the uh, heating element. I'm not even really sure um, which component is what, but we've got a sensor up here. kit that I have has everything. Uh, I think this is a thermostat for the for the upper portion. So this is the thermostat for the intake air <clears throat> and uh, it will shut itself off um, at intervals based on uh, this sensor and also the one down below. Okay, now we've got a couple of components uh, down here to address. This one I think is another thermostat. Let me pull that off of there. And we'll get we'll get the heating element off. I'm curious to see what the heating element even looks like. burned or what mm, it looks continuous I wonder if this little thermostat right here is the problem all along this is whatever that says what does it say 105 uh, 397 6263 and we got some numbers there but they did not include this sensor, this thermostat in, the, in with the new kit. So I'm going to have to, as much as I hate it, I'm going to have to use this with the, uh, with the new one. Maybe we'll look out though, and this will actually, this will actually work still. I'm crossing my fingers. sent along I want to try it down here okay that's that's not all the way on there right now but okay still not blowing hot air I'm gonna try um, I got to get a gator clip to jumper some wires back there Okay, so clearly we either have a problem with that that breaker right there. I guess that's what that is, is a breaker. It's either that thing that I could not replace because I don't have one. I guess it could still be this one, maybe not getting a good connection because I'm using a jumper wire for the moment. Uh, but I want to see if maybe something came loose up here in the control panel. Let 
Well, we do have what we, hopefully a schematic. All right, we have a schematic. Or at least a wiring diagram. Okay, so looking at the schematic on this, uh, we can kind of see what's going on more or less. We've got the two four, 240 volts you can see right here. Here's one, uh, one of the leads of the 240 on this side. And you've got the other uh, 240 over here. Um, there's a switch and the sw Okay, this is internal on the switch, on this switch rather. So we've removed that. We can see here, and there's several things right here in series, okay? Uh, one of the things is the thermal cutoff. Uh, that said, that's not resettable. Um, and we can tell what it is because it has the color of the wires that's running to each side of it. So this is the one that has the red wire and the red white wire on the other side. So if we want to come back here to the rear of the machine, we can see exactly what that particular thing is. And actually, it's a part of this. So uh, this is a thermal, this is a cutoff between this lead down here and this lead right here. So this side going this way is a thermal cutoff and that's not resettable. I've already tested it and you can test it with a multimeter and basically just set to ohms. And testing across that, we've got we've got continuity. It's well, I'm not holding it on there very well, but you can see there's continuity. So that component, that direction is good. If we want to test the component the other direction, these are the violet wires. We will look at what they do in just in just a second. But while I'm back here, I want to go ahead and test it. So we can look for continuity on that, and we have continuity, and it's 7.1k. And if we go to uh, this one, this also, this is the one we replaced, so we know it's good. I don't even have to test it. You know it's good. Everything else has been replaced, pretty much. Uh, the only thing, really, that's left is the timer. And you can see that the oper what they're calling the operating thermostat has the red-white wire on one side, and it has the red wire on the other side. If we go back here to the back of the machine, uh, let's see, uh, red, white, and red. Okay, so this is the operating thermostat right up here. And that's, again, that's been replaced. So we know that's good. The old one, I think, was still good too. Because I tested it for continuity and it's, it's, it's also, it seems okay. The high limit thermostat. So it has a red wire on one side and it has that orange wire it's attached to the heater as well. So it's that one down there. It's attached to the heater uh, with the orange and red wires coming off of the heater. But you see the orange wire goes back here to the timer. Uh, I've already tested where those um, hook in. So the orange hooks in right here on this side. Um, and I've tested this switching. So over here we're good. Um, but the problem is between A and C right here between this one and this one. This is where the 220 comes in to this switch. Okay, so on this timer you have some, uh, you have this cam in the middle, this plastic piece right here, and you can see these protrusions right here where that's like a cam, and you can see uh, as it rotates it will strike these, and this is actually another one that goes here. It will strike these uh, little white armatures in different ways and cause them to make and break these connections between uh, these terminals on e either side. You can see this one particularly is going on this side and it's, you know same thing over here on this side. You get the idea. But you, what you have to make sure is that these terminals are um, are actually clean and this one right here on this side was not. Um, I tried to film this a second ago. It was very difficult to get film and uh, didn't realize that my camera had turned itself off. So sorry about that. You can't see it dirty, but believe me, this, um, this contact right here was very dirty. So what I did was I took a, a piece of emery board or like a, um, a nail file like this and you can uh, steal one of these from your girlfriend or your wife or whatever. You just get down in here and file this. and 
also for good measure if you want to you can spray some contact cleaner in there which I'm going to do clean those contacts and uh, hopefully that will get this to the point now where where these will actually close when they're supposed to be closed see like right there that's a setting where um, all of these are supposed to be bridged uh, so A and C are the two uh, main wires coming in. They, they need to connect in order to supply power for this thing. So if that those don't close, you're not going to get any power. So right there, it looks like they're closing from what I can tell. And they are now clean, so um, we should not have this problem anymore, hopefully. So once we get this back together... I believe we'll start get we'll start seeing some heat. Okay, we're gonna get this switch back together, and we'll see then if uh, we've solved the problem. It really couldn't get any simpler to take one of these switches apart, so I would not advise uh, replacing one of these switches. Maybe unless the uh, unless the timer itself, it's possible I guess that the timer itself, you know, you might run into problems with this piece. Um, and if that happens, sure, you know, I mean, that's just one good, re valid reason you might replace the, the entire timer. Possibly, because I don't know what the difference in price would be b between just this part and the whole timer switch. But uh, there's not much that can break uh, with these terminals. And, and the, ins uh, you know, I would just, as long as they're not completely worn out, I would just clean this like I just did and try to avoid replacing your timer because you probably don't have to. But let's get this thing reinstalled and we'll see if we now have heat. I'm pretty confident we're probably going to have heat. Uh, to install our, uh, this switch, there's some clips in here and basically you just compress these clips together uh, if you want to take the thing out and just press it in if you want to install it. It's just real simple. Just put it up here, up here and press it in and it's installed. I mean, it really could not be any more simple. And then you, all of these are terminal. terminals, uh, the wires, so there's a grounding wire here you don't want to forget. Uh, and then you've got this one, of course, that goes up to the timer motor. And then these on this side. Probably wouldn't hurt to go ahead and spray these with some contact cleaner too, but I don't think it's necessary. Those terminals look pretty clean. It was really those internal ones. Uh, on this one, we have some uh, connections up here for, for switching that is not used on this model. Um, there would be some more options on other models, but it's not used here. I think this ought to give us uh, some heat like it is right now. We'll try it. If it doesn't work, I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, replace this other thermostat down here. I'm going to put the old one back in on the bottom if this does not work this time. Oh, I smell something. It's getting warm. It's warm. Okay, she's fixed completely now. The bearings are all sounding great. Uh, the heat works. Um, this is one, actually, that I'm pretty proud of this because uh, I've got this washer that came off the curb that I've repaired. And now I've got this dryer that came off the curb up the street. I've also got the Amano washer with this too that I've also repaired and may or may not use. It's, it's a good washer. I'll probably keep it on hand just as a backup in case this one goes down permanently. But yeah, you know, for 40 bucks or less, I was able to repair this washer, uh, this dryer, excuse me, instead of uh, tossing it out. I could have actually gotten away with only spending about $16 on this one because turns out the only thing that was really messed up to the point where I had to replace parts 
were the uh, roller bearings inside for the tub. Even the belt was still good on it. So uh, I will save that belt, save the extra parts. I will probably put the old thermostat back in the bottom actually, because I think that one's good too. And we're just gonna call this one, man. So that is gonna do it for this Admiral dryer, but this also will come under the uh, Whirlpool or Kenmore brands. There's some other brands too. Roper, I think, makes this same dryer. So uh, if you're having this same sort of problem, definitely check all, all of these things that uh, we talked about. You know, there's a gas version of this dryer too, which is very similar to this in the way that uh, uh, in the way that all this stuff, the thermostats and everything that are and the cutoffs are all laid out. So um, if you need it, there's the schematic, the diagram for the gas. Uh, here are the diagrams. <clears throat> here are the diagrams for all the switching for this particular one. The problem on this one was that this red wire over here that's on connection A, and the black wire that goes into connection C, uh, those are the two main wires, the thick ones that come into the back of this timer. Those were not making connection when the timer was in more dry mode. So what we ended up doing, uh, fixed the problem, was uh, taking that apart and uh, cleaning those contacts, and that's all we had to do with that. Didn't have to replace this part. We really didn't even have to replace any of the electronic parts. I think all of the ones that were in there we're still good and the only problem was the contact. Yeah, simple straightforward repairs on this. This is definitely gonna be a keeper dryer because of the ease of repair. I will never get rid of this as long as they keep making parts for it that are reasonably priced, so I see no reason to get rid of it. Anyway, that's gonna do it for this video. Uh, hit subscribe down below if you've enjoyed it and we will see y'all later.